Unlike glucose or dietary fat, excess amino acids cannot be stored, but they can be used as a source of energy by producing the corresponding carbon skeletons from these amino acids. Catabolism of amino acids produces two types of carbon skeletons. Glucogenic carbon skeletons that can be used by the liver in gluconeogenesis to resupply the bloodstream with glucose during fasting. Ketogenic carbon skeletons derived from acetyl-CoA can be used to synthesize fatty acids, ketone bodies, and cholesterol. Proteins, most proteins, are, will be degraded to amino acids. Let's say you get alanine here. Alanine can be converted to pyruvate. Pyruvate can be converted to glucose. Okay, so most amino acids can be converted to glucose as well to give you energy in glycolysis. Let's take the example of alanine produced from the digestion of dietary protein. Alanine can be converted to glucose by the liver by first converting it to pyruvate through alanine transaminase and then Two pyruvates can be used to produce a molecule of glucose through the process of gluconeogenesis. The synthesis of one glucose molecule from two pyruvates requires an input of 12 ATPs. As a result of this energy expenditure, Glycolysis of a glucose molecule derived from alanine will produce 12 ATPs less than the maximum amount expected from glycolysis, which is 38 ATPs. Therefore, the net ATP output from one molecule of glucose derived from alanine will be 26 ATPs instead of 38 ATPs. Therefore, the output of glycolysis of glucose derived from alanine is 32% less efficient than glycolysis derived from carbohydrates. If you like this video, please subscribe. Thank you.